Yes. No. It's about football. Cha cha cha. Good morning. I say that every week, even though it's like the afternoon. It's like four o'clock, Kitty. Four o'clock? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it releases at four o'clock. But hi, welcome to Our Vegas Fantasy, going into week 11. Week 11. Week 11. We're I'm here. Kenny Davidson, by I'm the way. I'm Christina Shaw. How'd you do this week? Uh, decent. I went three and two. That's good, considering you were like, I got a text from you at like 11.30 in the morning. My players are doing crap this week. Yeah. So that, you did better than that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah I, I came through. And then I was on an airplane when we didn't know if uh, Josh Allen Josh right. Allen was going to play. And I was literally about to take off. And it was going to be it was about to be 90 minutes before yep. to find out. And I was literally, I literally texted Kenny. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have service. You know, like, I don't know if I'm going to find out before I take off. I was like, is it possible that you can put Tua in for me? Because if not, because then that would really suck. But then right before I took off, we found out Alan was still playing. So I was able to keep him in. So two pieces about that. One, we found out Alan was active. But early on in warmups, after Christina took off, he wasn't out of the tunnel yet. And Case Keenum was taking snaps. Oh so my, my gosh. thought was, number one, had Josh Allen been active but been the backup, which is ludicrous. But which I read that. Yeah. Too. Which there I- was a thought of that. So, like, it could have happened. Oh, I would And then been. you would have been screwed. Yeah. But then he comes out of the town, like, like, you know, they do, like, a big wrestling entrance. Josh Allen, and the place goes nuts, and then he takes it, and then he's in the game. The second part of the irony of that is that had you started Tua, you would have had a better week. Yes. So there you go, because Tua actually did better than Josh Allen. Yeah, but I still won that league anyway. Still won anyway. It didn't didn't matter. But But still, it was like, don't you like hate that? Yes. When you have to do something or when you're, you know, when you're, even if you're at dinner or something and you're like, what do I do? I don't know the answer. Well, there was another one like that that happened at the one o'clock game. I was checking this out because I desperately needed a quarterback in a super flex league. And I didn't, there was no quarterbacks in the wire there. And all of a sudden, at 1 o'clock for a 105 game, the word comes down, Matt Ryan is starting. Oh, yeah. And I shoved him in there. So and I got quick. a quarterback. Still lost. But I was able to get Still the quarterback. Lost. <laughs> but I, like, I, I, I would have lost by, by 30. I, I, I was competitive because I was able to get a, a Matt Ryan game out of that. But right. like, I'm, I'm, the phone, like, my phone alert goes off. Matt Ryan is starting for the Colts. I'm like, damn, I like, run to them and get him in there. That was crazy. And pick him up in a bunch of super flex oh, leagues. good. I'm glad they did that. Yeah, and they won. Yeah. Yeah. Good. The inexperienced head coach. Saturday. Yes. Saturday yeah. wins on Sunday. Good. There you go. Nicely done. Good for him. So let's uh, get to the highs Wait, of the week. how did you do? Oh, how did I do this yes. week? I went 34 and 33. I'm out of all three of my guillotine leagues, by the way. Oh. Guillotines. Sorry. Yeah, I'm out, out of all three of those. So I'm down to 67 leagues for the rest of the year. All right. Um, but I went 34 and 33, and I'm going to tell you the story later on of how I went from 34. I went from 33 and 34 to 34 and 33 after the game. (laughs) Which was awesome. Yes, it was awesome. We'll talk about that later on. But let's get to my fantasy savior, the man who I will be erecting a statue of in my house if I win (laughs) any leagues this year, and that is Mr. Justin Fields. Insane. Rushing for 147 yards. Get out of here. Now, I'm 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 a year early. Like, I drafted him a ton last year, and he was terrible until December, right? And then he comes on in December. And the same thing this year. I drafted him a ton, but he comes on starting week five, and he's been ridiculous. What like what happened? What clicked with him? I don't know. It's maybe crazy. this was the plan all along. Like maybe this was they were they were just getting him ready. But now, here's what I'm going to do, and you're not going to like this. I am going to pour cold water on this, and oh this God. is what I'm going to tell you. This is what scares me. Now this week, he plays Atlanta. They're going to kill him. Like, you know, he'll he'll get another big night against Atlanta, right? And then then it's at the Jets, home for Green Bay. A little tougher. Coming out of the bye, here are your three games out of the bye. And now week 15, which is the first playoff week of the year, right? Right, right. Home against your Eagles. Now, you see, have you seen quarterback numbers against the Eagles? Mm -hmm. You see what Heineke did last night? He had six points. Right. Right? Week 16, home against the Bills. Oh, yeah. Then week 17. It could be a shootout. But then week 17, they're in Detroit. So. If you make it that far. If you make it that far. But this Uh, is the issue with Fields. Like he's having historic numbers. mm -hmm. And he's doing it on the ground. So maybe that neutralizes the issue against Philadelphia and Buffalo. But here you got the two 
probably best teams in the league against the quarterback. In week 15 and week 16. So Brutal. Are you still going to play? I mean, I'm gonna, to you play. have to. If yeah. he's getting you 30 and 40s, how do you sit a guy like that in the playoffs? You don't. Right. You have to hope. Right? But just temper it. Yeah. Because that's going to be the issue with Justin Fields getting into the playoffs this year. Mm-hmm. And week 14, they're on a bye. So you better be already be in the playoffs at right. that point. Right, right, right. Right? Which is late. Yeah, they have, there's a week. Week 14 is going to be a problem for people this year. Yeah. Because you've got Chicago, New Orleans, Atlanta, Green Bay, Indianapolis, and there's another team. There's six teams on by in week 14. Jeez. Yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. So we're going to get into that soon. Patrick Mahomes. Oh. Oh, yeah, he had a bunch of touchdowns and a bunch of, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. What else? Right? Yeah. And Tua. Now, here's the thing. The three quarterbacks that are at the top of the list this week were the same three quarterbacks at the top of the list last week. Hmm. Fields, Mahomes, Tua. How do you like that? Tua has three monster games. And he's 8-0 and oh when he started and finished a game this year for the Dolphins. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. I heard that stat. I heard that stat. Good for, Not good bad. for you, Tua. Good for you. When was the last time the Dolphins were really good? In my lifetime, I'm trying to think. It's been a long time. It's been before my lifetime. Yeah, I mean they're they're legit this year. It's been a long time. So, C. D. Lamb, 150 yards and two touchdowns. Great week for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been good. Mm-hmm. He was a little down in the first month, and we were worried that he wasn't worth the second round pick. He's absolutely been worth the second yes, round pick. He's yeah, one he's, of the elite receivers in the league for he's sure. Came up. Yep. yep. Speaking of elite receivers, the catch. That Justin Jefferson made is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Insane. Yeah. In the situation it was in, which was fourth down. Yeah. Like fourth and long. (laughs) Which I can't believe he even threw that ball. Yes. But in that coverage on fourth and one. But whatever. Hey, it worked. Right? It worked. And Justin Jefferson has his his, uh, highest yardage this week. Yep. 193 yards. Best receiver in football. Yeah. Yeah, not a question of my mind on that. Uh, it's a good week to be a Christian. <laughs> Christian Watson and Christian Kirk. Yes. Both have been great weeks. Yeah. Watson, three touchdowns, and Kirk, two touchdowns. Yes. Yeah. Christian Watson is the waiver wire darling of the week, which yes. we're going to get into that. Mm-hmm. And Christian Kirk has had a fine season. Yeah, surprising. He's had a very nice season. I, I'm glad I took him where I took him. I took him quite a bit. And he went pretty late. Didn't he? Sixth round, seventh round. Yeah. He was going in the range, the same place that Elijah Moore and Hunter Renfro How that were going. Who that well yeah. Well, you know, I I at least what I did this year is I split between those guys. Mm-hmm. So I took a bunch of Elijah Moore, took a bunch of Renfro, but I also took a bunch of Kirk. Like so I split him I kind of split that round. Mm-hmm. So the Kirk my Kirk leads are pretty good. So there you go. And then the a guy we expected all along to be on this list oh, yeah. from the Tennessee Titans, Nick Westbrook Akine. Yeah, we're random. Random. But hey, two touchdowns, 119 yards. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah. When it should have been Traylon Burks, and it was Nick Westbrook Akine. I know. Ikine. I was so happy to see Traylon Burks back. Yeah, but he didn't do much. No. Did you play him anywhere? I started him in one league where I absolutely had to start somebody. I mean, there are guys, you know, sometimes you have to. I had to start Dotson in a league last night. That didn't mm-hmm. work out. You know, just sometimes you're stuck. Yeah. And uh, I was stuck in a league and I had to start Burks and it did not work out. I was stuck in a league and I did not pick up. I did not play a running back because I had Zeke and he was questionable. And then all of a sudden he was out, but I literally could not drop anyone. If I was going to drop anyone, it was going to be Tyler Boyd. And I did not want to do that. That's happening more and more this now with, with as many teams on by as you can get in a week, these six, these, like these big buy weeks. Yeah. Um, just, you have to take a zero sometimes. Yeah. I see it. I see it in the NFFC where I, I, I was up against a player that did not drop the new England defense. And started it. I don't oh blame. wow! Yeah, I would. I wouldn't either. Yeah. I mean, there are certain defenses that are really reliable this year, like the Patriots Eagles. and the Ravens, the Eagles, the Ravens. Right. Right. Those are the league I didn't. I didn't drop the Ravens in one of them. Like I just I'm keeping. I'd rather keep them than drop somebody. Yeah. So I understand. Thoroughly understand that. Running backs. Hey. Hello. Welcome. The 101. Jonathan Taylor. Welcome to the list. How about it? Hey. How you doing? Oh my God. Jeez. Week ten. Week one was the other week he was on this list. By yes, the way. Yes. Week yes. one and week ten. That's going to be good for your Jonathan Taylor teams. 
Uh, right. 147 rushing yards, a touchdown, and uh, two for two for yeah. 16 yards. I have very few Jonathan Taylor teams that are alive. The ones I do, they're at five and five. I'm like, let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's I got him now. Go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> but, man, I mean, what a brutal year. Yeah. Yep. Dalvin Cook. Yay. He's he has here. gotten better with age, I think. Yeah. Not necessarily producing as much, but, like, I mean, he's still producing this year. He's been terrific. And he had a long touchdown. Didn't do much other than the long touchdown, but that's enough. Yeah. Right? 119 yards, one touchdown, and three receptions for 27 yards. So yeah. That, that helped. That's, Extra three little PPR points. Yep. That's quite good for him. He's been, a, he's been a solid player this year, and he's not getting hurt. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's gotten hurt less. Remember the couple, a couple of years, he's just a shoulder problem and a hamstring problem and mm-hmm. nonstop. And he's getting hurt a lot less now. He's, like, actually doing better with that. So. Yeah. There you go. How about two straight weeks? The number one tight end is Cole Komet. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Crazy. Yep. Good for him. Yep. Good for him. Big benefit from the field's resurgence is Cole Komet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Travis Kelsey. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Lots of yards. Lots of touchdowns. Every year. Yeah, yeah. Every week. Travis Kelsey. But welcome back, Dalton Schultz. Yay. I had to play him this week because Hertz was on a, or uh, uh, Hurst was on a bye. That's Not right. Hurst. Hurst, 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 yeah. yeah. Hurst yes. is on a bye. Yeah. So, yeah, so now who am I going to play every week? Gosh, it's going to be a... That's a problem. It's going to be a dart throw. Schultz or Hurst? Yeah, that's a pro- I, I think Schultz is a every week starter. Yeah, he, I mean, he was, but then he kind of was doing... Like, well, he's hurt. Yeah, he was yeah. kind of like... Rah, 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 I want him, there. though. Especially now with the two big injuries at tight end this week that we're going to talk about. You, Schultz is a big commodity right mm-hmm. now. So... Those are the goods. Who crapped the bed? Did you crap the bed? Did I crap the bed? Did they crap the bed? We all want to know who crapped the bed. Crap the bed! And you know who crapped the bed again? It's Justin Herbert. Oh, just, what the hell? He's not doing that great this year. Okay. This week, possibly, Sunday Night Football, there's a chance Step he gets back. It up. He gets what he needs. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. There's a chance they play this Sunday. You watch Herbert this week if he gets them back. Yeah. Look, I mean, look quarterbacks need their receivers. Yeah. They just do. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has been brutal. And ironically, in a year where Aaron Rodgers was brutal, he has his best game of the week at home against the Dallas Cowboys with no Romeo Dobbs, like no Randall Cobb, not that he matters much, but like, you know, he's throwing to Christian Watson. He finally right. has a good week. I mean, these guys need their receivers. And Joe Burrow needs Chase. Right. Right? And Herbert needs Allen, and Herbert needs Mike Williams. Yes. And Palmer is a nice fill-in guy, mm-hmm. but he's not an alpha. Right. So, you know, his alpha is Keenan Allen. Right. And hopefully he gets him back, and we won't see Herbert on this list anymore because it's frustrating the living hell out of me. Yeah. Same. Yes. Debo Samuel. Oi. Two for six. We're going to get into that whole team in a bit. So let's come back to that. But yeah, not a good week for Debo. Chris Olave. No, I wanted to sing the song. You can still sing the song. No, but I have to change the words then. When the ball hits your head. Drink a minor. Then you didn't run as fast as you can. That's Olave. The sad version. <laughs> the sad version. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's been great all year. What are you going to yeah, do? Yeah, Bad yeah. week for him. But a guy who's back on this list again is TJ Moore. Ugh. Get out of here. Stop. He's only had two good games this year. And now he gets Baker back. And look how good Baker was for him all year. Not. <sighs> Not. Right? What a mess. I know. He's going to be a guy, you know, maybe they get a big quarterback in the draft. And maybe we we get we we get DJ Moore to be what we think DJ Moore can be. But DJ Moore's always been a guy that just does not live up to his fantasy capital. Never lives up to his draft capital. I feel like he did two years ago. Never where you draft him. It's yeah. just you draft him high and he never quite gets there. Yeah, well when you know, Walker's only throwing ten for sixteen. Yeah. Moore got four of those. I mean, no, Moore, I, I, Moore yeah, got no. six out of ten. Of them. It's not. I'm not saying it's necessarily his fault. We don't know. I want to see him right. play with a big quarterback yeah. and see if he becomes the guy. I think he would be, but even if they get a rookie, he's not going to suddenly yeah. 
blow off the charts. Not not the first year, no. Right. Yeah. So. True. And they're tanking for it. They yeah. want that quarterback. And there's two big ones coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Maybe even more than that. Amari Cooper. Guy's had a pretty good year, honestly. Yeah. Pretty good year for Amari Cooper. And he caught all, all three catches. Yeah. All three passes that he caught. So, yeah. three for three. Just surprised me in a game against Miami where where you, you can throw on Miami this year and he didn't do much. Mm-hmm. Uh, rare appearance for Derrick Henry. It's all right. He's allowed. He's allowed. I could use a bounce back from him this week in, in Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happened. That's Thursday night football, by the way. Decent matchup Thursday night. Ooh. Tennessee Green Bay. Ooh. Interesting game. Yeah. Because this past week was, oh, oh my, my God. gosh. The announcers didn't even know what to say. No. Like, Al Michaels is completely, like, trying to sell this to the public. But yes. you know, you know, he's thinking to himself, oh, my God. What? Bad. I know. Like, what other stat am I going to say? What other thing am I going to talk about? Oh, my gosh. It was funny. Guy. If it wasn't, you know, the people out there that crap on fantasy and crap on the gambling. I know we really craps on gambling anymore, but the people that crap on fantasy. You tell me who's watching the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers on a Thursday night. Bucky. Right? Other than Bucky Hurt. <laughs> right? <laughs> who's watching that game on Thursday night football I, I mean, I if it's not for it. fantasy? I couldn't even watch it. Right? I'm watching the game and I can barely watch yeah, the game. Yes. All I right? Know. I'm like staring at it. I'm like, oh my that's, God. Yeah. Right? Like, Something please happen anyway. Right? Thank you, fantasy football. I mean, that's why Thursday night football exists. There would be no Thursday night football if, if nobody cared, if nobody did fantasy. Just to remember that. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Cordell Patterson, speaking of that Thursday night game. He didn't, yeah. he didn't touch much. I think he was just getting rested because he was two games in five days after coming back from injury. Yeah, but he but, should have had a great game in the rain. Like, come on. They didn't use him. I know, but he should have. They should have used him. Yeah, I know. They didn't use him. He was pouring. Him. Yeah. So. And George Kittle. So, on. Um, now, I put two 49ers on this list. So let's, let's talk in general about the problem. What the hell do we do with the 49ers? Here's the problem. They're spreading out the ball. This is it. Yes. Right? So McCaffrey, even McCaffrey's under 20. Elijah Mitchell's back. Elijah Mitchell carried the ball more than McCaffrey. Yes, lead the ba- led the backfield right? with it for 18 times, and right. he just comes off IR and just takes over. And he looks good, too. He does, but then right. what did they, why, did, why? why did they trade for McCaffrey? Right? And then you've got Ayuk, who had a good game. Samuel, who did not have a good game. Kittle, who did not have a good game. So you've got three receivers, two running backs. Which guys are going to be now? McCaffrey's going to get his 15 to 20 every week. We know this. It's almost impossible for him not to. That would be a crime. If, there, if you get McCaffrey under 15, I mean, I don't, know, you'd have to, I don't know how you would do that. But you're going to get that. But in terms of the rest of this team, who's it going to be every week? It's going to be Kittle? It's going to be Samuel? It's going to be Ayuk? It's going to be a different one every week. It's a nightmare. And they don't throw the ball enough right. to really realize that. I mean, unless they're going to be behind in a game or unless you're in a shootout. Right. Right? Yeah, I don't know. That's don't, an absolute nightmare. Nightmare. I don't, I don't really have any of those guys, honestly. I have Ayuk a lot. I've got McCaffrey in quite a bit. You yeah, know? but when you drafted McCaffrey, he wasn't oh, on yeah, that no, team. Oh, yeah. I, I know. But Ayuk and, and Debo. Yeah, I don't have any of those guys. I, I stayed away from all of them. I got Debo in two Dynasty Leagues. Well, Dynasty's different. Yeah, so yeah. not much I can do about that. Yeah. I got Debo in the podcast league. My podcast league team, by the way, is dead. Oh, I know we were doing so good in the beginning. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just lost Cooper Cup. Yeah. I'm dead. I'm five and five. I'm, I, I, I have that listed as one of my dead teams right now. Oh. Like team that can't come back. It's not, it's not coming back. I have no, I, what do I do with this team? It's a nightmare. We got a good waiver wire week. Well, we'll try. Uh, and what do you do with DeAndre Swift? Yeah, I, I don't know. What do you do with him? You can't, you can't drop him, but Williams clearly is the lead back. Yeah, on that team. Not not just that. Justin Jackson got t- got touches this week. Right. So they're in a three man committee, mm-hmm. and he's getting a third of the, third of the work. Yeah. The last two weeks, he's only had eight points. That's gross. Gross. If he's not healthy, why are you playing him? Put him on yeah. IR. Like why? Why? What's the point? Yeah. They're not going anywhere. I mean, I know they beat Chicago this week, but they're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. What's the point? Yeah. Makes no sense to me. Yeah. All right. Interesting questions here. Can we drop CH? It's so hard. It's so hard. He played 6% of the snaps. 6%. Like, 
That's yep. it. Yep. But, you know, he had a decent, like, first four games, and then he just, like, fell off the planet. Well, they're not using him. Right. They're using Pacheco instead, right. and they're Who using McKinnon. Saw 16 for 17. I mean, it's 2022 in the year of our Lord, and Jared McKinnon is, is getting more snaps than a former first-round pick. It's insane. Yeah. I don't know what to do with him. I, I'd hate to drop him. Do you drop him? I mean, I don't know where, where you use him. It, it, he, it's, this is not a matter of him not being healthy. It's a matter of him they're not using him. Right. Now, I mean, I mean, all of a sudden, if Pacheco gets hurt, all of a sudden CEH becomes relevant again. I don't know what happens with that. It's not like he was, you know, he was doing great early in the year. But the way that they're running their offense, I mean, Mahomes threw the ball 63 times a week ago. Right. They're not using running backs anyway. I mean, Pacheco, even with a good week, still had under 10 points. Right. So it's not like Kansas City running backs are winning you weeks anyway. Right. So what do you have them for? I know, but do you just drop them? I mean, I don't That would th- hurt. But I don't think he's value. Because I don't think even if he becomes prominent that he's any good. He might maybe get to a 20-point game, maybe if he gets lucky. But, like, you're not looking for that from him. It's not going to happen regularly. Yeah, I know. You're not starting him with any confidence going forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So mm. I don't see where the value is with him at yeah. this point. Speaking yeah. of, can we drop Kareem Hunt? Yes. I think so. I treat Kareem Hunt now the same way I would treat Jalen Warren, Najee Harris. Uh, not Najee Harris, sorry. Jalen Warren, um, Rashad White. Like, he's a su- supreme handcuff. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. That's yeah. all he is. Yeah. Like, if Chubb gets hurt, Hunt is good. And I don't even think Hunt is that good. Keep this also in mind. The Cleveland Browns made it very public that Kareem Hunt was available for a fourth-round pick. Mm -hmm. And nobody did it. Yeah. Maybe not that good anymore. (sighs) Just a thought. And Chubb is really good. Yeah. So Hunt's a, like, handcuff. Right. And maybe not even a great handcuff, but he's a handcuff. That's all Mm -hmm. he is. So so your decision to drop Kareem Hunt is basically, all right, well, do I roster handcuffs at this point or do I not? Right, at this point, with all these bye weeks, it's like you, you can't even roster these guys. I, I mean, I want to, ro- to. I, I do in the playoffs. I want to roster as many handcuffs as I can. Well, in the playoffs, there's right. no buys after week 14, you said, right? Yeah, 15 starts the playoffs. No, you have so. 11, and you got 14's a very bad bye week. And then 13's, 13's a nasty, it's not a bad bye week, but there are a couple buys in 13. And then obviously 15 on, it's, it's everybody plays. Right. So. But that's it. You, you know, he's purely a backup. Yeah. I had David Montgomery, but with the Herbert injury, no, you're not dropping David Montgomery. No, but I wouldn't expect much of David Montgomery if you should drop him or not. Right, but you He's know. He's been bad. You, yeah, but, you know, I, I looked to see who has been. Like, I don't have him anywhere, but I looked on all my fantasy leagues, and every single person that had Montgomery started him. Yeah. Every single person. Because it was against Detroit. Right. But who ran, who ran the ball? Justin Fields ran the ball. Right. That's and, the problem. And Herbert was outplaying Montgomery. Right. So p- everyone's still playing them. Yeah. And you and they're up against Atlanta. And did you see what Dr. Foreman did against Atlanta this week? He yeah. shredded them. Yeah. I feel like if Herbert's out, you can actually get a good week out of Montgomery this week. I do think you need to use him this week. He's got a hip injury, right? Herbert does it, has a yeah. hip injury. So there's a chance Herbert's not going to play this week. Yeah. In which case, yeah, I really do think you have to fire up Montgomery. Yeah. Can we drop Kyle Pitts? Yes. I have 10 team leagues. Although I have two, I have two 10 team leagues where I picked Firemuth up. He was, he was dropped during the bye week. I picked him up. I'm dropping pits in those leagues. Yeah. I think it depends on your situation. Yeah. This was another guy. All in all of my leagues. Everyone started. Of pits. course. Yeah. It's, you don't sit him. It's almost like you're like, Still holding on to him having these this huge second year career, and it's just it's not going to happen, guys. I mean, he's getting targeted. He got eight targets last this last couple weeks. He's getting targeted, but they're not getting him the ball. Yeah. Like, and he's just going to tantalize you and tease you, but he's not going to give you twenties on a regular basis. Not with Mariota quarterback. Right. It's not going to happen. Right. But if it's if he's all you have, then you got to. You got to. Ken. You got to. to. Yeah. It's that's been one of the worst draft picks of the year. I know. 
There's, There's always one. Oh, there are more than one this year. There's that's that's a bad one. one. That's a real bad one. Yeah. And let's get to, speaking of bad, let's get to the injuries. So, Cooper Cup. It's this year's Derrick Henry, right? Mm-hmm. Guy killing it for the first half of the year and then done. Probably until the playoffs. I, there's no reason. I wouldn't expect him back. There's no reason for the Rams to bring him back this year. Yeah. Why he, would they? He avoided a really bad injury, but, you know, he's not going to be out for the season, apparently, but no. he's still going to be out for a few weeks. But he, do you hold on to him? I mean, <laughs> if the Rams are 5-9, and nine, why would they bring him back? The Rams are terrible. Yeah. They're, not, they're the worst team after a Super Bowl win that I've ever seen. They're awful. It's just crazy. Yeah. So there's no reason for them to bring Cooper Cup mm. back. You're hanging on to him. I mean, if you've got the IR spot, you might as well hang on to him. But, like, I got so many don't guys in my it. IR spots, I, like, I can't even deal anymore. Yeah. But don't expect it back. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, like, if you drop him, it's not not a terrible decision at this point, I don't think. Juju got banged up. Concussion. I don't think it's that bad, but it's a concussion. Mm-hmm. So he might miss this week. Kadarius Sony time in, in Kansas City. Holy yeah, cow. Yeah, he did great. He sure did. Yeah. Didn't take him long. Yep. Out for the year, Zach Ertz. That hurts. Uh, Ertz, it hurts. It hurts. Really, really hurts. I'm not changing my team name, though. But it still hurts. <laughs> yep. Yep. Jerry Judy apparently escaped a major injury. Yes. That didn't look good at all. Yeah. Yeah. So some sort of ankle strain, yes. not nearly as bad as we thought it could have been. So mm-hmm. that's good for him. And we talked about Matt Ryan. He started the game. How about that? Good. I'm glad. Right? I'm glad. Yep. Because Erlinger was freaking dreadful. Let's watch the Colts start winning games now. That Now they'll probably give the ball to Taylor like crazy. Now you got Ryan throwing the ball. Oh, you mean like giving the good players like what they deserve? Right. Give oh, your best yeah, player yeah. give your best player the ball. How about yeah, that, how about right? Yeah, that? that sounds like a good yeah. idea. Yeah. So long Frank Reich. So long Frank Lloyd Reich. <laughs> that's a, that's a, did you know that song? Simon Garfunkel song I called So Long Frank Lloyd Wright. The Frank. architect. Frank so yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, Frank Reich Frank Reich got fired and for Jeff Saturday. Saturday, 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 Saturday. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Dallas Goddard's hurt. No, it's eight it ain't so. Yeah, he's hurt. How long do we have? They don't know. They're saying miss some time. So that to me means two to three weeks. For the shoulder problem. Well, yeah, we saw the injury. Or yeah, we saw it and he played through it. Right. But, I mean, if it's an AC joint sprain was or that, if it's... Was that what, what, when he got hurt? Was that the face mask? Was that when he got hurt? No, it was before that. Remember, oh. I was, remember I was screaming at the TV last night? I'm like, oh, no, not, not that. And he got hurt. He did get hurt. Yes, 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 yes. So, he's going to be out for a little bit. No. Yeah. Baker Mayfield starting in Carolina, if you care. If you're desperate for a quarterback in a super flex league. That's all I got for news. That was a lot of news, though. Yeah. That's that was, brutal. That was a br- it was a brutal week, guys. It was a brutal week. Hang on, guys. It's going to get crazy. Still a brutal season, if you ask me. Some of these some of these are real bad this year. Mm-hmm. Song time. You ready? But there's good news. Uh. Get that good waiver wire that will set your team on fire. So don't miss fire or he will go to the highest buyer. Don't wait too long because you know they expire. You're required to aspire the highest waiver wire. It's a good week. There's a lot this week. There's a lot. There's a lot. I don't know how good any of these guys will be, but there's a lot out there. Now, obviously, if Kadarius Tony is available, which he's not available in many, many leagues, but he might be in a, in a 10-teamer, go get him. 51%. Cole Komet, obviously, go get him. 59%. Rondell Moore, obviously, go get him. 73%. Yeah, he's probably Ooh, not available. Yeah. Yeah, so what was the question we got a couple weeks ago? Is Rondell Moore a thing? And I said, eh, he's not one of my guys. Well, you, you know what? Yep. Ertz, I... Ertz is out, and you know what? Yeah. Oh, you like him now? I mean. You're finally taking my advice, Kenny? I mean, what are you going to do? I don't have him anywhere. But I do. He's, he's there. Oh, good. Yeah. Christian Watson. He's your guy this week. He's the guy. Yes. Uh, only 10% owned. Um... Also, Isaiah Pacheco, check him, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Only he's a, 25% owned. He's probably out there a lot. Yeah, Absolutely. So check that. 
Check pa check. Check pa check. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's the only running back I think that's worth getting mm-hmm. if he's out there. I mean, Rashad White's not out there. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I mean, Jalen Warren's worth picking up too, but I don't think he's out there much either. Mm-hmm. So Pacheco's the only running back. But you're looking at wide receivers, it's Watson, mm-hmm. Darius Slayton. Only 7% owned. Yeah, he won't be after this week. You yeah. need to get him. He had three, like, really decent weeks in a row. Yeah. How about that? How about a resurgence for him? Good. He was as dead as could be. I know. Right? And I've always liked him. Yeah. And they're playing the Lions this week. Speaking of resurgence, Paris Campbell. Yes, another one. Right? Staying healthy. Yes. Good. Good. Although, do you really want to play someone in Indiana? I don't know. I would do it. You need it. They're playing the Eagles. I know, not good, not great, not great. But you should be on a roster. Yeah, I mean, you're not starting him because you you like you're not you're not like yeah, I'm starting Paris Campbell this week. I mean, it's like you got, but you might need him. Yeah, Van Jefferson, another good one for the cup injury. Ben Squaronic, if you're interested in that, you know, I, I wouldn't even know how to spell that guy's name. Right. <laughs> I mean, I think Van Jefferson is going to get some time to yeah. play. I don't know if it'll be. I don't know if he's any good really, but. He's only there. Eight, only eight percent owned. Absolutely. I mean, he's a big, he's a pickup this if week he, for if you sure. Got a spot, try it. Yeah, give it a shot. Jawan mm-hmm. Johnson at tight, tight end. end. Right. I'll give you another tight end that should be on the list. This is, this is Trey McBride. He needs to be on this list. Ooh. The backup for Ertz, the, the the high draft pick. That was gonna be my. Oh. After midnight. My I'm after sorry. After midnight. I took your after midnight. So let's talk about your after midnight guy. Trey McBride. Trey McBride. Although you might, you might have to get him a little earlier. Yeah, I think he's more like an eleven fifty-five guy. Yeah. Not really. Midnight. I don't know, but he's only one percent owned, and he's not like, like proven. It's true. Like, are you really gonna use he your waiver need- priority or a bunch of money on Trey McBride? Trey McBride. Like, who the heck is Trey McBride? Trey. Well, he's got to prove himself to you, Christina. He better. He better be good in bed. That's it. Wow. That's just blunt. You <laughs> <laughs> better be good. Yeah, you know, this was this was supposed to be the innuendo part oh, of the show. That wasn't, that wasn't much innuendo with that. <laughs> you better be good, damn it. Trey McBride. Trey. Trey. And if you don't like Trey, how about Foster? As in Foster Moreau. Oh. Yeah, tight end for Waller on IR. I mean, worth a shot. You could do that with Foster. Do it for me, Foster. Foster, Foster, ah. Foster. <laughs> faster, Foster. Faster, Foster. Faster, faster. Foster. Faster, Foster. Right. Or about Jahan Dotson? Eh, actually, no. 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 You're not interested in that. No, not at all. No, not even in after midnight. He's mm-hmm. not an after midnight guy no. for you. What about Nico Collins? Nico. Suave. No. <laughs> Nico Collins. Sure. You're interested in that? Houston wide receiver? Not really. I feel like we've had him on this list a couple times. Well, you know, he was left out then, too. Yeah. I mean, he's desperate for attention. Yeah. I think I'm going for Trey. It's Trey for you. Yeah. Trey. Or Foster. Foster. Tr- Trey, or f- Trey or Foster. For Christina Shaw. Although in the, the afternoon. Stink. Boy, they stink. It would be really hard to pick up anyone from the Raiders at this point. Right? It's amazing how bad they are. Yeah. As a season ticket holder, you're killing us, Raiders. You're yeah. killing us. Who the hell is L. Cager, by the way? L. Cager, Kenny? So His name is Lawrence. So here's the thing. <laughs> I'm watching Red Zone, right? Yes. <laughs> I didn't even know who the guy was, and it just says touchdown L Cager. And I'm really like, who the hell is L Cager? I don't even know his first name. His name is L? It's not L, obviously, but like who the hell is L Cager? This is Lawrence Cager. Lawrence, I like L better. You know L what? L Cager. Who the hell is L? So Cager. he's a twenty five year old tight end um on the Giants. Actually, it, on Yahoo, he's listed as a wide receiver tight end. So you could put him in at either position. He had his first NFL touchdown this past week. He's 6'5", 220. Uh, he started in uh, 2020 with the Jets. Then again in 2022 with the Jets. And then he was 
I guess, traded to the Giants. So he's a Jet cast off. New York cast off. Yeah, doesn't leave New York. Who the hell is L. Cager? Lawrence Cager. Okay. Lawrence or Larry Cager. Cager. Well, Who the hell is Jalen Virgil? Okay, so Jalen Virgil is a wide receiver from the Broncos. He's a rookie. He's 24 years old. He's 6'1", 210, and it was his first career catch and touchdown. In this game, he had one reception, one touchdown for 66 yards. A long touchdown. How about one that? long touchdown for Jalen Virgil. Don't forget it. And who the hell is Kaderil Hodge? Okay, last one. It's his fifth year. He's 27 years old, 5'11", 183 pounds. His first year was with the Rams. The next two years, he was with the Browns. Uh, the fourth year, he's with the Lions. And now he is with the Atlanta Falcons. This whole year, he's had 11 receptions, 184 yards, and a touchdown. So he's actually had some... Some receptions this year. And a touchdown. This and a week. touchdown. The touchdown did not go to Kyle Pitts. It went to Kaderil Hodge. Really? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Falcons. Really? Thanks, Bucky. Thanks. Really appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, right? that, was, that was a long list of who the hell. I know. I, we could, I, I didn't want to put Alec Ingold in there because we know who Alec Ingold is. But he scored a touchdown this, year, we, this week, too. And that's, there's nobody that's rostering Alec Ingold. No. But, like, he's the fullback. He used to play here. Now he's in Miami, right? So another guy that scored a touchdown that didn't help anybody on your teams because who the hell is rostering Alec Ingold? But anywho. Anywho. But thank God, you know, we have Hodge that we Hodge. can play over Kyle Pitts. Hodge, Cage, or Virgil. There you go. Quite the names. Some names. By the way, uh, my overthought this week, which actually ended up working out, I had all morning long in three leagues. Darius Slayton or DeAndre Carter? Hmm. And I decided not to split them up, and I went with Carter. And Slayton went off. Oh. But here's the thing. Carter went off, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I actually lost two points in the decision, so it wasn't that bad. I mean, that morning, I'm like, oh, my God, I cost myself leaks again. Here we go. Oh, no. But it, it worked out. It was fine. But, like, that was a tough decision to make. But you made the right choice. By the way, in the, in the league where I've got the four running backs, the, the Barkley, Walker, Etienne, Kamara, I, uh, I get a win for that because the guy I sat was Kamara, and he's the one that was least productive of the Oh, good job. I you did made good. the right decision. I made decision. the right decision. Now, this week, I don't have that decision because Etienne and Walker are on by. Right. So I've got Barkley, Kamara, and I've got Devonta Foreman as my third running back. So there you go. Next, after this week, we'll see. Well, good luck. Yeah. Good luck. I might try to trade one, but it's, it's a, just, I've been in that league for – it's the New York League, and I just – People don't really make a lot of trades in that league. No, I've tried. Yeah, it's just not a lot going on. And what I want back, I want one of the big wide receivers back. And yeah. nobody's trading those guys, even for a big running back. So Yeah. Yeah. Like nobody, nobody's team in that league is that great. I looked around because I'm trying to, like, like see? I have to say, I'm, I'm going to say this just telling you, I'm the favorite to win that league. I don't know. Aren't I in uh, third place in that league? No, I'm in second now. Oh, that's another one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Let's see. But that's a Justin Fields league for me. So Oh, know. I'm in fifth place. Yeah. My team there, when it's healthy, is Fields, Godwin, Sutton is my second running back. Wide receiver. My wide receiver's not great, but then you get to the four running backs and Dulcich and the Philly defense. Yeah. Yeah, that that my team's loaded there. Oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm losing around Goddard. No, hmm? I'm losing Goddard in and you're losing Goddard in that league. So So Guess I gotta pick up some Kyle Pitts. Oh no, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna go. You're you're gonna pick up Trey McBride. That's what you're doing after midnight. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't even think I need to pick him up after me. I'll pick him up in the afternoon tomorrow because it's the New York League and no one gives a crap. <laughs> yeah, it's true. There are a few players in that league that are not like really going all out. That's a money league too. I don't understand it. Just I mean, definitely a couple couple of uh, deadbeats in that league for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just playing for fun. No, I mean, I've, they, I've, they've been in that league for years. I know these guys, a good, good chunk of them, and they're competitive. I'm just surprised. I think they just quit. Yeah. You know? People have lives, unlike us. <laughs> Apparently not. Yeah. Apparently we don't have lives. This is what no. we do. This is what we do. All fantasy day. Fantasy and music. All, all day. day. And you raise a kid on top of this. Yeah. I just do fantasy and music. But anyway. 
It's a good life to live. I'm I'm okay with it. I'm not fantasy complaining about my life. And music. Yeah. I'm this is my life is a fantasy. <laughs> All the way around. This Every part true. of it. This is true. I live a fantasy. So <laughs> by the way, so let's talk about my my thirty three and thirty four going to thirty four and thirty three. Came on the last play of the last game last night. So De- Devonta Smith gives me, gets, uh, I'm up against him in the Dynasty League. And he beats me. And I'm like cursing the world. And it's, I'm up, and it's like over two points at that point. I'm like, oh man, I'm dead, right? I'm losing that league. And then he runs backwards on the last play on, that, on the scramble play. He runs backwards and fumbles. But they call a lateral pass, but it was a backwards pass that went into the end zone and Washington recovered for a touchdown. So he lost two and a half points on that play. That is insane. And I won. Then I went from 33 and 34 to 34 and 33. In a league where I went, I went, I'm now seven and three in that league. That is that. amazing. Are you f-ing kidding me? That is amazing. Right? That's a good. I haven't had one of those. It's a good one. That was a good one. Well, it's the best thing. I should have took a picture of Kenny's face when he figured that out because we were watching it at my house with Thomas, and Thomas said, there's there's a negative points right now for for him. And right, for Don, Devonta Smith. For yeah. Devonta Smith. And Kenny's face was so epic. I wish I got out my phone and got a picture of it. He was scrolling on his phone so fast, and his look of just – he was just like a excited puppy dog. But here's the other thing. It was so great. It's it was the FFPC, and they're a little slower on stats than the other leagues like Yahoo, ESPN, Sleeper. They give you it instantly, right? So I'm looking at my Yahoo scores for Devonta Smith, and they were like down to like thirteen six or whatever it was. I'm like, wait a minute, why is Devonta Smith have seventeen on FFPC? I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna win this. And then like maybe ten minutes later, I'm like. Ah. Got it. It was so awesome. His face was just epic. Yeah. Now, this is a league, mind you, where two years ago, I lost on a Patrick Mahomes kneel down. Oh, because he got the negative right? points. Right? Because I was up by point one, and I lost by point one because he kneeled down twice, and I lost that league. You know who's really good at kneeling down? Tom Brady. <laughs> Every time he kneels down, he always kneels down forward. Is that right? Yes. So he doesn't so lose he doesn't yards on the yards. kneel down? Yep. They wow, were, they were at, talking about that look on Look at air. Tom Brady caring about our fantasy yep. leagues. They were, they were literally talking about that on air, and I was like, that's pretty interesting. He always kneels forward. That's, I did not know that. Yes. Wow. I'm surprised you didn't. Oh, you probably weren't awake to watch I did not did you, know that. Did you no, watch that so game? Tom, I, no, I wasn't awake for the game. Yeah. I, I woke up in the third quarter. <laughs> I can't listen. I can't watch everything. I got to sleep some point. No, no, right? Kenny. There's no sleep till week 18. 18. All right. It's true. <laughs> Stupid. How about Tom Brady telling, uh, saying that it, Munich's one of the best football experiences he's ever had? I know. That was so that awesome. That was great, actually. Did you notice nobody left after the game? Yep. They all just were standing there singing Sweet Caroline. Yeah. That was so cool. I mean, I know the one, I know these European games are a pain in the neck for, for us on the West Coast because they start at 6 30 in the morning. But God, they're doing so much for everything. It, it, it looked great there, honestly. I know. And can you imagine like living there or if, let's say your job takes you there and you, you'll you never see an NFL game again, you know, unless you come to the States and it's like now they're there and it's like, oh my gosh, we got to go. I don't care who's playing. We got to go to the game. You I know? mean, think of, think of a parallel for that. Like think when like when Premier League teams in, in England come over and play a game at Allegiant, they sell it out mm-hmm. or big soccer matches. I mean, we're not a big soccer country, but like when there's a big soccer match, with two Premier League teams or 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 one of the leagues, they sell out. Mm-hmm. Like it's a big deal, right? Right. Yeah. So of course, like to get Tom Brady in Munich, they probably went nuts. Yeah, it was really cool. right, really cool. You know, and when they booked that game, they might have thought of the. I, I don't know. If they thought maybe it could have been Tom Brady and Russell Wilson. Maybe that was already booked at that point when Russell Wilson wasn't there. But that would have been a huge matchup, mm-hmm. right? But so it's good for the NFL. Mm-hmm. We can live with it. Yeah. You know, it's one game and one game every few weeks. I like it because I'm awake. I'm like, ooh, I get to watch a game. Right. So you get to watch an early game. It's all good. And if you're on the East Coast, you're definitely watching it. Right. So it's right. just us on the West Coast where we have to deal with it. Yeah, we're so. bitching. Yes, we are bitching because that's what we do. That's why we have a show because mm-hmm. it's the Fantasy Bitch Fest. <laughs> that's what these are. That's what shows are. That's exactly. Every, every fantasy show. That's what they are. They're just Bitch Fest. And we're, <laughs> and we're no different, folks. We're not, we're not above the, we're not above the, uh, the call of duty to bitch about fantasy football. That's why we're here. Or praise it. Right. 
Ready. It's a Wednesday night. Who should you choose? Make the right choice so you win, not lose. Starter sit. Starter sit. Starter sit. Woo! What you got? All right. Michael wants to know, Swift or Darius Slayton? Not Swift. Slayton. <laughs> you can't play Swift right now. You can't play Swift. You can't do it. Nope. You know, and of course, when we're going to say that, one week they're going to decide to give him the ball and he's going to get you 20 points. He's going to be on your bench. But like, how can you risk it? No. And Slayton has ha- had Slayton's at least good. 58 receiving yards in four out of the five last games. And he's clearly like the top receiver. Yes. We keep waiting for Wandale Robinson to become the guy. Slayton's the guy. Slayton. I mean, they, did you know that Kenny Galladay was after, after this week and he played? Oh, Kenny Galladay. What a joke that is, by Kenny the way. Kenny Galladay. Remember him? What do I do? That's another. What do I do with Kenny Galladay? You have him anywhere? In Dynasty? Oh, he shouldn't be on a roster. There's not one roster, not redraft, not dynasty that he should be on. Just, he's going to be out of football in a year. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah, no, he's done. So sad. Okay, Dennis has a question for the flex, for his flex uh, spot. Sanders versus India in Indy. It's Drake. funny. You said Sanders, and I thought Emmanuel Sanders. Like, wait a minute, Emmanuel Sanders isn't playing football anymore. No, no, no. no. Not, Miles not Sanders. Sanders. Right. Miles okay. Sanders. Yeah. Uh, if Gus Edwards is out, Drake versus Carolina or Foreman at Baltimore. I'm not sitting Foreman right now. See, I'm not sitting Drake if Gus is out. But I think Gus is going to I think play. Gus is going to play. So if Gus... I mean, look, you know, look, if Gus is out and they're against Carolina... Play Drake. That's hmm. what I think. And what was the first one? It was Miles Sanders. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're playing these guys over Miles Sanders? I'm not crazy about Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders has been good. I mean, he was terrible last night. I mean, both the, all the Eagles were bad last night. A.J. Brown, Miles Sanders were all terrible last night. But, like, Miles Sanders is, like, you're playing them over Miles Sanders? Okay. I'd play Drake over all of them if Gus is out. Although, I don't think Gus is going to. I, I think don't think Gus, Gus will be out. is playing. I think you're right. So, if Gus is playing, Sanders. And Foreman ran for, a Foreman ran for 100. So you're, wait a minute, you're playing Sanders over Foreman. I mean, I don't know. It's tough. I'm, I'm. Donna Foreman ran for 130 yards last week. Like Donna Foreman looks really good. Yeah, they're playing Baltimore. I mean, Sanders, you know, it's true. Sanders might be the third option in that group. Yeah. That's a tough call. Yeah. But if, if Gus is playing, don't play Drake. No. Oh, the Drake's going to get touches. But Even not if Gus more is than, playing, he's going to get touches. But not more but than not Sanders like, no, not, or no, no, Foreman. No. no. Right. For, I mean, Foreman is the guy. I mean, Sanders, you know, Sanders last night... The first touches of the game with the Boston Scott. Ugh, which was Wasn't so that weird? Frustrating. So frustrating. Right? So weird. All right, here's another one. PPR, Connor, Ramondre, or Pollard? I'm not sitting Ramondre. No, I'm not sitting Ramondre either. Although, wait a minute. If, pa- if Pollard without Zeke is, is a stud. Right, so if Zeke sits. You can't play both? You can't find a way to get both in? Mm-mm. Connor's the easy sit. Of the yeah, three. Connor's an easy sit. Easy, easy sit of the three. Mm-hmm. Even though they just released Eno Benjamin. By the way, the days of Rex Burkhead might be numbered because Eno Benjamin signed with the Texans today. Oh, thank God. Right? So you may, you may be done with Rex Burkhead. Oh, thank God. I'm so sick of talking about Rex Burkhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Rex. Jeez. Rex, if Rex, if you're listening, it's just, it's just a fantasy thing. Yeah, it's you just know. a fantasy thing. Yeah, you're probably a nice guy, but you know. Here's a good one. So yeah, wait, so it's Connor sitting and, and we're going with, well, you know, Pollard, if, if Zeke's out, Pollard's, you know. Pollard or Ramondre? That's tough. That's tough. I guess I'd go Pollard. Yeah. You but can go how do you way. sit Ramondre? I don't know. That's tough. The only way you can sit Ramondre is because they're against the Jets. The Jets are a good defense. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and mm. Pollard's playing Minnesota. Oh yeah, you can run in Minnesota. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Here's a good one. So he has like three top quarterbacks in this one league. And he's basically saying he realized uh, he tried to trade one of them, but no traders. So he's holding on to all these three quarterbacks. Fields, Lamar Jackson, or Burrow? Oh, my God. I know. He said he drafted. How come nobody's trading for any of them? So he drafted Jackson in the fifth round and Burrow in the 13th. 
he couldn't pass it up. And then he realized. Why was Burrow available? What kind of league is this? That Burrow's available in the 13th round. Yeah. And then he realized both of them were on the same bye week. So he was lucky enough to get Fields off the waivers a couple weeks ago. So he tried to trade one and he couldn't. So he's holding on to three of them. How do you choose who to start? Um, Jesus. You don't sit Fields. I know. Like I have, I have a Burrow Fields league. I have a league where I have Burrow, and I picked Fields up, and I got them both. I can't trade one. I'm fa- I'm playing Fields. Yeah. Until I mean, week 14, then I'll play Burrow, and then the playoffs. I have to make a decision. I have no problem. But I listen. That that's a good. But problem how do you have. sit Lamar Jackson? But you got to play Fields. You honestly, you, I think little, I think Lamar's the easy guy to sit. Lamar really hasn't been great since week three. He's had one great week. He really has. He's had one great week. You look it up. One great week since week three. He's not playing great. That's an easy one for me. That I mean, you start, you start, I mean, you ride, I, and right I, now you're riding fields until yes, it stops. Yes, yes, yes. I also yeah. think fields, but I think it's just really hard to. I would do. I would rank it fields, Jackson, Burrow. I'm ranking it fields, Burrow, Jackson, especially when we get to the playoffs. All right. Especially if Burrow gets chased back. But we both agree start fields this week. Yes. Um, I already said this one. Okay, and here's the last one from Dennis. PPR flex. Pierce, Foreman. Yeah, basically Pierce or Foreman. Gabe Davis versus Cleveland. You're not going to play. Why not? I don't think you're going to play Gabe Davis. You just used Gabe Davis. Like He had 21 points this past week. He was great. Uh, he's just so over the place. He is. He's inconsistent. He's very inconsistent, no doubt. Her starting running backs are Mixon and Chubb, and wide receivers are Jefferson and St. Brown. Right now, he's got Pierce. Oh, there you go. Yeah. They had a nice team. Yeah. Who is Houston playing? Um, Washington. Yeah, he's probably going to have a good game. Yeah, I'm doing Pierce. Yeah, I do Pierce, too. I, yeah, keep, keep Pierce in. Yeah. And Foreman's going to have – I think Foreman's going to have a good week, too. Yeah. Boy, that's a tough one, too. I know. That would go Pierce. Probably well, maybe Pierce. put Foreman in in your other league. Yeah, the right. Sanders, Drake, so then you can root it's, for Foreman you know, and want. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes yeah, I'm I like, know. I don't know who to pick. And I'm like, well, I'll play, like, Alan Lazard, you know, before he was hurt. I was like, what, who should I play? And I was like, I'll play him in one, you know? Right. And then I'll sit him in another. And it, like, worked out. And I was like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Because then I rooted him for one and then was like, no, yeah. the other. So it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, so I've got another one. Now go. Let's hear it. So now I have um, Walker on a bye this week. I've got like, I'm this this team is stacked, but I've been really kind of short on on running backs because I'm not really playing Cream Hunt. I'm not no. playing Chase Edmonds is all no at all. And Herbert is now on IR. I see. Yep. Oh, they put Khalil Herbert on IR yep, today? It just, just says it right Whoa, now. Sideline for at least happened, four huh? games with the injury has sustained during the final kickoff return of the Bears. Yep. Live news just as we're – Live yep, news. It just happened. Wow. So normally I'd put in Herbert, but because – So do I pick up Latavius Murray? Pacheco's on here. I guess he's my – That's your pickup. My pickup. What yeah. was the other option? Gordon – which I don't really trust. Nope. McKinnon, which I'd rather Pacheco. Yep. Uh, McKissick, no. Ooh, Samaje Pirine. I just like saying his Samaj, name. Samaj, Samaje Pirine. Oh, I can pick up Rex Burkhead, Kenny. Yay, no. Oh, let's get Rex Burkhead. No, I think I'll try. I guess I'll try for Pacheco. Yeah. All right. There you go. Khalil Herbert on IR. Brand new news. This just came out. Ugh, so. Dang it. Anywho, we've reached the end. Of our week 11 podcast, but not without. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. No, no. To end the fantasy season of Zach Ertz. It hurts, it hurts. Oh, man. I'm sad. I'm very sad. Zach Ertz has been great since he got traded to the Cardinals. So sad. He's getting older. Rest in peace, Zach. Is he gonna is he gonna recover from this? He's gonna be thirty three next year. Wow, is he really gonna be thirty three? Yeah. Isn't it weird how tight ends seem to go well into the thirties? I mean, look at Kelsey. Right? Mm-hmm. Seems like tight ends can play longer. 
Like running backs are done by 27, 28. Well, you see all the right stuff they put on their body, all the right. hurtings they put on their body. Wide receivers is generally 31, 32, mm-hmm. then you're like in trouble. Like, but tight ends, like, I mean, Tony Gonzalez played forever. Jason Witten played forever. Oh, Jason Witten. Right? I mean, it yeah. just seems like they can. They're, they're, Larry, they're like, no, they're like Larry quarterbacks. Gerald's not a tight end. No, 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 but they're, they're, like, they're like quarterbacks. Yeah. They seem to go forever. Mm-hmm. So, but Zach Gertz, I guess we're not going to bury Cooper Cup, even though, you know, it ain't good. It ain't good, no. folks. It ain't good. It ain't good. All right. But we're not burying him. We're not but burying him yet. Dearly beloved, we're gathered here to revive, her, to revive the Ooh, season. We're reviving someone? We're reviving the season of my boy, Jonathan Taylor. Yay! Who's going to be a top five running back the rest of the way. Unless he gets hurt again, he better not. But Jonathan Taylor, the 101 this year of draft picks, uh, is back. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. God. Gosh. If your team is alive with Jonathan Taylor on it, have fun. Best game since week one. Right? Week one. Did you hear me? Week yep. one. Yep. Step it. I up. mean, granted, it was against the Raiders, but still, take it for what it is. He was yeah. dominant. Yeah. He looked good. That's the point. Yeah. He looked good. But anyway, that is our show as we head into week 11. Not much long, but not much more to do. I know. Only a couple Getting more episodes. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. I'm Christina Shaw. I'm Kenny Davidson. Have a good day. You too. Bye.